Hello and welcome. I didn't forget to unmute this time. Yippee! I'm Aries. We're reading The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Pet Fish. That's what it is. <laughs> I am so tired. Like, I'm so sleepy. I'm so tired. My body hurts. There's so many noises. Like, my neighbor's mowing the lawn right now. Love that. It's so fun because it's like, once one of them starts, it's like throughout the day, everyone else just decides to mow their lawn. So it's just lawn mowing all day. So I have that to look forward to. Thankfully, I don't think it picks up too much on the mic. Um, if it does, <laughs> womp womp. You know. And there might be a bit of construction going on in the backyard. I don't think I don't think it. They should be. There should be. It shouldn't. There shouldn't be too much noise because I think they're just doing like um. What is it like the cement thing? Not pouring cement, but like putting it on the walls. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know when they scrape. You know those uh satisfying videos where they scrape the cement in in between the bricks and stuff love that love that i want to eat it do i have pika i don't know but i do want to eat rocks that's it that's it anyway i have my headphones on so i can't hear any other noise cancelling headphones so I can't hear it. I can only hear my voice when I speak, which is awesome because that's good for when you need to read and speak. I might be yawning a lot. I have, I have tea. I have tea. I have a blanket. I have my pom-pom pudding plush. And I have my book. I'm... I'm looking forward to having a very cozy time. <laughs> Reading fish on me. You love to see it. Anyway, I haven't really completely said no, I haven't set up everything properly yet. Um I'm just pulling up my Twitch chat. You know, I know there's a way to integrate your Twitch chat into your OBS, but I haven't figured that out yet, so that's so fun. I just have to like pop out chat every time and everything's, I have a whole bunch of different windows on, but it's fine because we're just reading and I don't need to fill up a whole screen with a game, you know, you know, you know what I mean? What did we do last time? Oh yeah, two days ago we did an art stream of, uh, not ice cream, art stream. Sorry, am I pronouncing? Hey, art stream. Okay, <laughs> my pronunciation might not be so good today because I'm very sleepy and I just feel like slurring my words. <sighs> then I did do a couple of tongue twisters, so hopefully we're not too bad today. I just gotta... I don't know. I don't know, man. We're just gonna do it. We're just gonna do it. So... Last time we left off on chapter 7, where the fish is going to be taken to the emperor in a fishbowl that uh, the prince was like, I need a bigger fishbowl for this fish because it's my emotional support fish, basically. Basically, that's what happened. <laughs> Technically, no. Basically, yeah. But yeah, let's get started. I chapter to shadow. Oh my god. I might fall asleep during this reading. <laughs> uh, hopefully we can get to like chapter 9, 10, maybe. Um, I generally don't read that very much. I, I read kind of slowly. And I chat here and there between it. So we don't usually get through too much. But we still get through something, so... It's fine. All right, chapter seven. The fish meets the emperor. That's the title. That's the title of the chapter. 
Prince Jing brought Li Yu to Chanqing Palace. As they made their way over, the system, which had been silent this whole time, suddenly spoke to Li Yu. The pre Ours are going to be very difficult for me today. <laughs> the prerequisites have been met for the side quest, Clear Bright Pearl. Would the user like to begin the quest? What was going on? He hadn't gotten along with Prince Jing yet, but now there was another quest? And a side quest, too? He couldn't glean anything from just its name, though. Liu didn't want to overcomplicate things by having to worry about a side quest and the main quest at the same time. He'd be overworking his poor fish brain. But out of curiosity, he still asked about the reward. The system replied, The reward for the quest is a temporary transformation medicine, allowing the user to return to human form for a short period of time. The effects will last two hours. There will not be any penalty for failing the side quest. Oh, shit. We're getting human the you. Maybe. Potentially. A medicine that could turn him back to human? Why wasn't this brought up before? Even if it only lasted two hours, couldn't he just do the side quest a couple more times? Receive the reward over and over and use them one after the other? Then he could stay human forever. <laughs> the reward can only be claimed once. The system mercilessly reminded him as it witnessed his naive stupidity. Fine, I already knew you were a fish scamming system. He, absolu he absolutely had to do this side quest. He had nothing to lose if he failed. If he had the medicine to transform, he could pick a suitable day to eat a ton of human fo food, talk a lot, and go anywhere he wanted to. For two hours, my guy? I don't know. Liu was originally human, but it wasn't until he became a fish that he appreciated how freeing and delightful it was to be a human. It would only be a short couple of hours, but getting to re-experience being human for even that amount of time was simply too alluring. It's just one more task. I'll do it. Hang on. This... This is too loud. You're too loud. Sometimes my PC is too loud that it, I can hear it through my noise-canceling headphones, and it pisses me off. It's just, seriously, it's just, it, it drives me crazy, actually. I am autistic. <laughs> I think it drives anyone crazy, though. Okay, too hilarious. Ah. I forgot my book. There we go. This quest, called Clear Bright Pearl, consisted of, consisted of only a single line. Obtain one luminous pearl. What? Bro, what? Ow, I think I pulled a muscle in my neck just now. That hurts a lot. <laughs> I didn't even realize it until... Oh, man. That's crazy. Ooh! 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 <laughs> I love having EDS. Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> That's so fun. Yesterday, I jammed my finger in the door, and it hurt so bad. Like, for... It did... Like, it's the kind of pain that just lingered for so long at its height. Ooh! Anyway. We're okay. <laughs> it's fine now. The stupid system's quest had always been vague about its instructions, but Li Yu was already used to it. He had no idea what a luminous pearl could have possibly have to do with him, a fish. The system had previously exp explained that side quests could only be activated after the corresponding prerequisites have been fulfilled. Seeing how this side quest became active while Prince Jing was talking to Chen to was taking him to Chenqing Palace, it must have something to do with the see with seeing the emperor. So it didn't seem like he'd need to make any detours. Despite being royalty, Prince Jing didn't like to ride in a in a palanquin. I'm I like I think I know what that is, but I don't know the pronunciation of that. <laughs> Holding the little carp with Wang Zi trailing behind, he made his way to Chanqing Palace at a leisurely stroll. The head eunuch, Lao uh, Rui Sheng, 
Dui. Uh, Luo. Luo Ri. Liu, Luo Ryu Sheng. No, Rui. Rui? I'm going off my knowledge of Korean pronunciation, but this is Chinese, so I don't know if ours are pronounced the same. Luo Rui Sheng. The head eunuch, Luo Rui Sheng, had already been waiting in front of the doors to Chanqing Palace for some time, and as soon as he saw Prince Jing, he rushed forward to greet him, bowed, and escorted him inside. Wang Ji couldn't go in, so all he could do was wait anxiously outside the palace. They had finally arrived. Liu swam to the water's surface, taking in the view of Chanqing Palace. As expected of the emperor's quarters, it was a majestic and extravagant structure filled with all sorts of rare and precious furnishings. The scent of sandalwood wafted by. Liu was utterly mesmerized. As magnificent as the room was, though, there was no fish tank in sight. Liu much preferred the quarters with, uh, the quarters with the porcelain fish tank. It was only because of this excursion that he discovered Prince Jing was taking him to Jing Tai Hall. Even after the title of prince was bestowed upon him and he left the palace, Jing Tai Hall, where Prince Jing had grown up, was still reserved for him. <clears throat> it truly was Prince Jing's territory. Liu was quietly proud of himself for managing to get into the tyrant's lair without much effort. He scanned his surroundings, but to his dismay, he didn't spot any luminous pearls. No shit. <laughs> Liu had hoped the system would give him some hints, especially since the side quests had come out of nowhere. But there hadn't been another peep from the stupid system since it announced the side quest. Liu had to set both the main and side quests aside for the time being. Without any leads, all he could do was leave it up to fate. Seeing the emperor was more important right now. In the book, the emperor had quite a backstory with Prince Jing. In the original story, Prince Jing's mother, Empress Zhou Zhao Hui, had already been in ill health before she gave birth to the prince. After he was born, she couldn't bear the fact that her son was mute. Fuck you! And she passed away shortly afterward. Fuck you! Oh my god. Whatever. <laughs> the emperor deeply loved and respect Empress, respected Empress Zhao Hui. So his feelings for his son had always been complicated. And he never grew very close to him. Fuck you! Oh, I hate these people. I hate them all. This was especially clear after Prince Jing turned 16, when the emperor ordered him to move out of the palace and into his own manor. Honestly, slay, though. All the other princes had only received their respective manners after they were married, but it didn't seem to matter to the emperor that Prince Jing remained unmarried to this day. As such, many people believed Prince Jing was unwanted and unloved. Liu was not one of those many people. That's so sad. Hey, I love him. I love him already and I just met him. And I love him. Actually. Actually, I love him already. He's so precious. I can't. The reason the Emperor was so distant from Prince Jing wasn't because he didn't care for him, but because he sought to protect him. Fair enough. As Empress Zhao Hui's son, Prince Jing had a much higher status than most, but no matter how noble he was, his muteness prevented him from inheriting the throne. Although the emperor had no desire to foster a close relationship with Prince Jing due to his wife's death, this was still his cherished wife's flesh and blood. Ordering him to move into his own manor early was the emperor's way of protecting his son. Ultimately, the emperor hoped this son would be able to live a peaceful life. That's kind of, that's kind of endearing. That's, I, I might cry. I'm very emotional today. I might cry. <laughs> I might cry. It's okay. It's fine. All else aside, Prince Jing wasn't really the tolerant type. When he was a child and the, other prince, and the other young princes taunted him for being a mute, Prince Jing would just roll up his sleeves and beat them up. <laughs> Good for you. Oh, I love him. 
After the emperor found out, everyone was punished, but he also privately warned the other princes to be kinder to Prince Jing. When Prince Jing's inability to speak, with Prince Jing's inability to speak, his education was a challenge too, but the emperor but the emperor specially appointed a strict teacher who had experience teaching mute and deaf students. That's so good. That's so good. He's accommodating. He's accommodating. <laughs> the emperor never voiced his love for Prince Jing, but his actions spoke for him. Liu, therefore, was not at all worried about this trip. Tell me I have issues. <laughs> I have issues. And... Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no, I have issues. Hang on, I need to get a tissue. <laughs> oh no. He loves him. Why are we so afraid of him? Oh god. He's accommodating to- You know what? I think- This Prince Jing, he's so he's so good. He's so right. If somebody's making fun of you, beat him up. <laughs> beat him up. It's like you don't have the words. For he can't even say anything back. So yeah, of course he'd use physical force to get his words across. Th that's so obvious. Like what were they expecting? So stupid. Ugh. Ugh. Even with words, I'm like, no, nah, I'll just use, I'll just, yeah, I'll just fight. <laughs> oh, and his dad loves him so much. <laughs> okay. Where were we? In the main, gross. In the main hall of Chanqing Palace, the emperor sat on a throne carved with intricate flying dragons draped in bright yellow imperial robes. He nodded slightly when Prince Jing entered. Tianqi, you've arrived. Prince Jing set the large bowl that he that held the little carp on the, a small table off to the side and bowed seriously. There's art, by the way. There's art of him bowing to his dad in this. It's so cute. Ugh, so cute. The emperor beckoned him to stand up, stand back up, smiling. As he looked at his son from a distance, he noted that Prince Jing was just as cold and quiet as always. Naturally, the emperor's gaze fell on the large bowl Prince Jing had brought. In the emperor's experience, bowls generally held soup. If someone came to Chanqing Palace with a bowl, they were usually there to present the soup to him. Assuming that Prince Jing knew what he had done wrong and had brought an offering of soup to apologize, the emperor chuckled. How considerate of you. The misunderstood Prince Jing wasn't sure how to respond. Of his sons, the emperor rarely tried to get closer to this one. Hey! <laughs> right after I cried about it? He felt his heart warming at the sight of the prince, trying to please him. He immediately ordered Lu Ruisheng to bring forward the prince's soup. Prince Jing couldn't speak. There was nothing he could do to stop Luo Gong Gong this time, and the head eunuch nimbly picked up the large bowl before he could make his objection clear. Another eunuch waiting on the side handed over a silver needle. Huh? Oh. At first glance, the soup looked like goji fish soup. Needle in hand, Luo Gong Gong was about to test it for poison like usual when he made eye contact with the lively little carp that had poked its head out of the water to watch all the commotion. <laughs> That's so cute. Luo Gong Gong was so alarmed that he nearly dropped the bowl. Ayu, Prince Jing, what did you bring? Equally started by Luo Gong Gong's sudden appearance, Li Yu immediately sank to the bottom of the bowl. <laughs> it's alive! Luo Gong Gong realized with a start. This wasn't fish soup. What exactly did Prince, Prince Jing bring? The emperor was too far away to see, but Luo Gong Gong's exp exclamation made him curious. While Luo Gong Gong struggled to think of how to answer, 
Prince Jin got up, approached Luo Gong Gong, and took the bowl back. <laughs> All without saying a single word. <laughs> He's just like, mine. <laughs> oh no. Oi. Oi. Oi, 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 oi. Oi, 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 oi. The emperor looked on in befuddlement. Prince Jing proceeded to bring the large bowl before the emperor himself, but he didn't look like he had any intention of handli- handing it over. His hands remained clamped around the bowl, the large bowl with its water rippled patterns, held a large volume of water. Swimming inside was was uh, swimming inside it was a small, palm sized carp. The emperor paused. Prince Jing, what is the meaning of this? Wu Tianqi smiled as he reached a finger into the water, swirling it gently. Liu had managed to seal a glance at the emperor from within the water and saw a middle-aged man with a square face and a short mustache. It was fortunate that Prince Jing's other features were more like Emperor Zhao Hui's, Liu, uh, Liu thought, and that only shared, and that he only shared his eyes with his father. If he looked more like the emperor, it would have been a blow to his good looks. <laughs> of course he looks like his mother. All pretty boys look like their mother. <laughs> Perhaps because he'd sensed Lu- Li Yu's criticism, the prince suddenly dipped his hand into the water. Li Yu was at a loss for what to do. He realized after a few seconds that the prince was playing with him, but they were standing before the emperor right now. What was the prince trying to do? Ever since Prince Jing had switched out his bowl, Li Yu knew that the prince wasn't planning on giving him to the emperor. Oy. When it came to presenting gifts to the emperor, looks were paramount. Of course, the small, dainty jade bowl would be more suited to the ruler's taste, but since the prince has had passed on the jade bowl, it was clear he had no plans on using him to try to please the emperor. In that case, why did the prince bring him to see the emperor? Why play with him in front of the emperor? I'm not going to think about that for too much. <clears throat> oh well, who cared? If the master wanted to play with his pet, it was the pet's duty to respond. Oh boy. Liu shoved down his embarrassment. This wasn't the first or second time he had to act cute for Prince Jing. He swam, stopping in between the prince's fingers. After hesitating for a moment, Liu nuzzled his fish mouth against Prince Jing's finger affectionately. Whoa, there was the smell of fish food, the mouth-watering red kind. His movements were initially, initially a little stiff, but as time went on, he began willingly chasing after the other man's finger. <laughs> That's very cute. <laughs> as Prince Jing looked down at the little carp swinging, swimming happily in the bowl, a light shone faintly in his eyes. The emperor almost thought he was seeing things. Prince Jing had always been cold and harsh, keeping his emotions under tight lock and key. And yet here he was, playing with a fish in a way that would, could only be described as gentle. In the past, concerning what Prince... Concerning that... Bruh, in the past, concerned that Prince Jing was too unsociable, the emperor had tried sending many cats and dogs to his son in the hope of providing him with a companion. But the prince never even spared them a single glance, never mind accepting one of them. At the time, the emperor thought the prince perhaps simply disliked pets. But now, for some reason, the prince... Jing, who didn't like pets, was making an exception for a fish of all things. Days, the emperor considered the different possibilities. After a while, and with great difficulty, he opened his mouth. Do you mean to say that you've started taking care of this fish? Mu Tianqi nodded slightly. Prince Jing had actually decided to raise a pet fish. The emperor was flabbergasted. It wasn't a bad thing, since his son of his sec- of his seemed to be finally- What? It wasn't a bad thing, since this son of his seemed to finally demonstrate some human feelings. But this fish? It wasn't even a precious, auspicious koi. It was just a little run-of-the-mill carp. It looked like the kind that was usually made into soup. 
Prince Jing's tastes were sure something. At this point, the emperor had already forgotten why he had summoned the prince. <laughs> That's, he brought the fish as a distraction. Did he know that it would distract him that bad? Oh my god. A pet fish, he said with a twitch of his lips, sounding a little forced. Not bad. Liu watched Prince Jing nod and felt like a little pony had trotted proudly across his heart. <laughs> Although Wang Gonggong and even Liu himself had long since accepted that he was Prince Jing's pet, this was the first time the prince was acknowledging it himself. Did the prince bring him here for the sole purpose of announcing Liu as his pet in front of the emperor? What a high-profile and distinguished pet he was! <laughs> Liu was floating on cloud nine. The point of the main quest, Priceless Pet Fish, was for him to become Prince Jing's pet fish, after all, and now the prince had straight up announced he was his pet in front of the emperor. Didn't that mean the main quest was complete? But there was no prompt congratulating him on completing the task. Apparently, a concession from Prince Jing wasn't enough for this stupid system. He still had to press on until he succeeded at getting along with the prince. A eunuch rushed in, announcing the noble consort, and the second prince were outside, requesting an audience. Uh-oh. This, that was when the emperor remembered why he had summoned Prince Jing. He gave the prince a meaningful look, but he was so busy playing with the fish that he didn't react. The emperor sighed lightly. Let them in. <laughs> He's just playing with this fish! Oh, he's so cute. Oh my god, I'll eat him. Not the fish, I'll eat the man. <laughs> he's so cute. That's the end of the chapter, by the way. And then I mentioned that these chapters are pretty short. That's the end of the chapter. The next chapter is called The Fish is Angry. Hell yeah. Oh, we're gonna get some drama. We're gonna get some drama. You know what I think is gonna happen? I think is gonna happen is um the noble consort is gonna come in and be like all uh ableist to like say stupid shit about not even to Prince Jing, but about Prince Jing. I hate this. I hate sorry, I keep looking at the captions and it said it changes the names to the most random shit. Okay. It's fine. It isn't English, I guess. But honestly, Jing is like such a basic name. Like, how do you... Mm. Prince Jing. See, it changed it to Princing. Prince Jing. Hey, that one was right. Okay. <laughs> what was it talking about? Oh yeah, he's gonna, uh, sh the noble concert's gonna be st a stupid bitch. And then the fish is gonna get mad and then, like, be pr all protective of Prince Jing. <laughs> Somehow. Somehow. <clears throat> Alright. Let's get to chapter 8. Liu was right next to Prince Jing. When he heard that the noble consort was coming, he wanted to take a look at her. Having already seen the emperor, who looked roughly the same as the description in the book, Liu also wanted to see what the woman who dared, pr dared provoke a tyrant looked like. Except his current per position was a little off to the side, and his view was blocked. <clears throat> Hang on, my throat is a little clogged. I've been having, um, some allergy issues today. I just woke up sneezing. Sometimes it's like that. <laughs> View was blocked. The year kept swimming back and forth, straining to speak, but to no avail. Just when he was about to give up and resort to eavesdropping, Prince Jing, who had been observing him for a while, Moved the bowl so that it faced the entrance to the palace perfectly. Liu was startled. A coincidence? Did the prince somehow notice him trying to look at the noble consort? 
Prince Jing had demonstrated a considerable aptitude for pet fish care so far, but there was no way he could be this attentive, right? <clears throat> Perhaps he just felt like moving the bowl. No big deal. Liu quickly convinced himself not to get caught up in pointless speculation. Since he had clear view now, he was going to look his fill. Before long, a graceful woman draped in imperial robes walked into view, surrounded by attendants and servants, and leading a tall youth. Noble consort Chu's hair was heavy with pearls and jade. Oh, pearls. <laughs> Crabapple blossoms in full bloom were embroidered around the hem of her light purple robes. That's so cute. With skin brighter than snow. She was beautiful beyond compare, and it was obvious the noble consort knew how to take care of herself. If it wasn't for the tall second prince trailing behind her, with eyes that looked rather like hers, it would have been very difficult to discern that she was already at least thirty. Oh, sheesh. The youth sighed dreamily. It was no wonder such a beauty was the most favored concubine in recent years. According to the book, noble con consort Chu was at the peak of her life. Is it Chu or Cho? Because I'm, I'm going off of, like, me being an MXDX fan. <laughs> the way you pronounce, like, Shen Qing Cho, Qing, it's, it's spelled the same way, Q-I-U, right? At the end, Qing Cho. But it's, like, pronounced Cho, so I don't know. I don't know. Noble Concert Chu, Cho, Chu. Chiu, was at the peak of her life at this point in the story. The emperor had already privately let her know that he planned on making her son, the second prince, oh, the second prince Mu Tianzhao, the crown prince. Mm-hmm, I see. Here we go. <clears throat> Hold on. I thought it was so clogged. The emperor, like many emperors of the past, wished for his D son to inherit the throne. Footnote The D son is a son born from the D wife. The D wife is considered the official wife of the man, even if he has multiple wives. Sons born of the D wife have higher status in the family than the Shu sons born to other wives. In non royal families, the eldest D son is usually the one who inherits the father's title. In the royal family, the eldest D son is usually the first one to be considered for the throne. Well, no, because he, he's disabled, so I guess we can't. Nonsense. <laughs> Blah. Years ago, he had made his first son, Empress Zhao Hui's son, the crown prince, only for the boy to tragically pass away at seven. Damn. The emperor and empress grieved for years until Empress Zhao Hui gave birth to the, to the fourth prince. The emperor, once again, had thoughts of making him the crown prince, but unfortunately, the fourth prince was not blessed. He suffered a cold at two years old and unexpectedly passed away at even at an even younger age. That's so sad. One after another. I'm losing it. I didn't really have it in the beginning, but I'm losing it. One after another, Empress Zhao Hui suffered a lot the loss of her sons. Despite how fragile her health had become, she was determined to give birth to a fifth prince, Prince Jing, regardless of how reckless it might be. But the heavens decided to play a cruel joke on the emperor and empress, and both of them received a great shock when they realized the youngest D-son was born mute. Oh, so sad, so scary. Oh no, a disabled. <laughs> A cripple. <laughs> oh no. After Empress Zhao Hui passed away, the emperor felt his fate must not be aligned with his D sons, so he never mentioned making anyone the crown prince again. But now, after twenty years, there was finally some movement from the emperor. The noble and noble consort Chu Chu Cho 
could not be more ecstatic. Although the emperor's favor towards her was clear as day, he never showed any hint of granting her the title of empress. But so what? As long as her son, the second prince, was named crown prince and ascended the throne, it made no difference. It made no difference if she was empress or not. The noble consort thought her suffering had finally come to an end. She even seemed to walk with a spring in her step. Once Lady Chu had greeted the emperor long oh, uh, greeted the emperor along with the second prince, the emperor asked her to approach. As he intended to pronounce the second prince as the crown prince, he had to afford her this respect. The noble consort smiled daintily and sat down next to the emperor. She glanced down at Prince Jing, her expression victorious. So what if he was the son of the empress? So what if he was born more noble than her son, the second prince? Prince Jing would still need to bow his head to the crown prince, the future emperor. She and the second prince shared a knowing smile, but Prince Jing didn't make any indication that he, that he noticed. <laughs> oh, God. Prince Jing's gaze never strayed from the little carp. His finger was still submerged in the water, playing with the fish's smooth back every now and then. Liu was getting a little pissed off from all the touching. Hey, you're being too rough. A fish can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> Liu evaded his hand, glaring fiercely at Prince Jing. When Prince Jing found his fingers fishless, his dark, unblinking stare lingered pointedly on the little carp. <laughs> I could cry. He doesn't care less about what's happening in this fucking room. He just... He's just a man with a fish. Oh, God. He's so precious. Ah! I love him. I love him. Oh, God. The temperature in the air around them was suddenly, uh, them suddenly plummeted. Was the tyrant angry because Liu wouldn't let him squeeze him? <laughs> Fine. Whatever. Good fish didn't fight with humans, especially not their owners. He knew Prince Jing was probably upset at the sight of noble consort Chu sitting next to the emperor. What child would be happy seeing another woman take his mother's place? Lady Chu was full of smiles, but her smile had an edge of provo prov provocation. She was clearly showing off. Prince Jing was obviously in a bad... bad <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ah! Words. Uh. Prince Jing was obviously in a bad mood. Liu decided. He had a good reason for using him as a stress ball. He leaned back in, nuzzling against Prince Jing's finger, hoping to make him feel better. I'll let you squish me, but don't be so rough, okay? <laughs> Prince Jing pursed his lips at the way the fish was clearly trying to please him and continued to squeeze the fish's back. <laughs> He's just squeezing it. Oh boy. Liu endured it in silence. If he felt that Prince Jing was truly being too rough and he couldn't take it anymore, he would dart to the side with a swish of his tail. But a little while later, he would always swim back, allowing Prince Jing to use him as an outlet for his anger. You fool me, what's happening? <laughs> boy, oh boy. Okay, let's do a quick recap. Mans gets transmigrated into a fish, right? Into into one of his, into like a, a web novel he was reading. Um, and he becomes a pet fish of Prince Jing. And now Prince Jing was called to, uh, the, the court, not court, what did I say? His dad called him, the emperor called him, and, um, shit's about to go down. So he's a bit, he's a bit, he's also mute, disabled, probably autistic, <laughs> a little bit autistic. Um, and he's using the fish as, who is, by the way, again, a man, the fish, um, he's using the fish as a as a stress toy <laughs> because he's a bit upset. <laughs> Upsetty spaghetti. <laughs> That's what 
that's what's happening. This book is called The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Pet Fish. And it's beautiful. And I'm so happy. And it's so fun and <laughs> silly. <laughs> ah! I can't. Anyway, hope you have a good day. <laughs> All right, where were we? Prince Jing to use him as an olive for his anger. The little carp didn't seem to hate his touch, Prince Jing noted. But why did it keep shying away and then coming back? Was he handling the fish too harshly, he wondered? Yeah! He's so good! It's a guy that's getting wild, I know! So good. The prince's touch became gentler. He's so cute. This This guy is known to be cold and, I don't know, like unfeeling like no human emotions or whatever but it's like he's obviously he just doesn't like people clearly <laughs> he's so cute liu instantly felt better who knew having his back squeezed like this could feel this nice it was even a little ticklish liu curled his tail around the prince's finger to show that he liked it oh boy prince jing realized that this <laughs> This little carb wasn't that hard to understand after all. Fish and human were absorbed in their own little world. They didn't care how they might look to anyone else. They're so cute. <laughs> I'm gonna be sick. Oh, man. Having already seen Prince Jing like this, the emperor watched the prince with the little carp with rapt attention. He never knew his cold-hearted and distant son could play with a fish. <laughs> Meanwhile, noble consort. Uh, Meanwhile, noble consort Chu's smile was frozen on her face. Prince Jing had managed to humiliate her without saying a single word. What's the matter, Prince Jing? She asked, trying to get the emperor to notice the prince's rudeness. There was a smile warming the emperor's face, with as he said, "Noble consort, Prince Jing has started caring for f caring for a fish re recently. What do you think?" Man is just in his own world. He's not playing the game. He's winning by not playing, and I love that for him. Of course, Lady Chu didn't think it was any good at all. She had come here with a goal, and she wasn't going to sit back and watch a drab, gray fish disrupt her plans. If the emperor was acting like this, he must have forgotten what she told him earlier and was feeling soft towards Prince Jing. Oh yeah, also before what happened is the fish caught well, there was a cat that caught the fish and was going to eat him, obviously. But then Prince Jing saved the fish from the cat. Probably just because he doesn't like the cat. <laughs> because the cat is a uh, noble consort Chu's cat. Chu Cho? Q I U. That's what's happening. Run. Uh, where were we? Feeling software switching, but the noble consort had come prepared. She tossed a glance to one of her trusted servants waiting on the side. The servant immediately left, then quickly returned with a snowy white ball in her arms. Yep. Lady Chu, uh, Lady Chu delightedly hugged the snowy white ball in her <clears throat> to her chest and smoothed its fur. She said gently, "Has the emperor forgotten about my piao?" Ch Oh, Piao Chu, I don't Chu, Piao Chu, Piao Chu, Piao Chu. This is really hard. P I A O X U E. Has the emperor forgotten about my Piao Chu? Chu. After seeing Prince Jing's fish. Interesting. That's a very... I never come across something like that. <clears throat> By now, the emperor had also remembered why he had summoned Prince Jing. He chuckled, rubbing his nose. The snowy white cat slowly raised its head and let out a meow. It was clearly conspiring with its owner. The Yu, who had been playing with Prince Jing, heard the meow and was so alarmed that all his fins stood on end. Did Chunqing Palace also have a cat? Carefully, Liu swam to the surface of the water to see what was going on, and there it was, nestled in the noble consort's arms. 
The snow white cat's sapphire eyes homed in on him immediately. That shape, that sound, w wasn't that his greatest enemy? With a shudder, Liu immediately dove down to the bottom of the water, but it was too late. As soon as the large white cat laid eyes on him, it let out an excited yowl, scrambled out of the noble consort's arms, and shot toward him like an arrow. Ah, save me! The cat wants to eat fish! <laughs> oh my god. He had thought that if he ever came face to face with his arch nemesis again, he would be able, he'd be able to find some escape route, or if worse came to worse, he could he'd slap the cat in the face with its tail. It wasn't until he was in front of the cat for real that he realized its teeth had left a serious mark on, its, on his instincts. Just the memory of that bite was enough to make him tremble. Trapped in the bowl, Liu had nowhere to escape to, leaving him with no choice but to curl into a ball beneath Prince Jing's hand. <laughs> he prayed the large white cat wouldn't see him, but he knew he was fooling himself. The cat wasted no time in pouncing and showed no fear of water as it opened its mouth to snap at the fish. Just as, just as it seemed as though Liu was going to end up in the cat's mouth, Prince Jing held the curled-up little carp in his hand closer to him. The cat bit down an empty water. Meow? <laughs> Confused, the, cat, the white cat looked up and saw the face and saw a face that it would never forget. Meow! <laughs> cat! Can't do this. So stupid. It's it's literally it's it's saying meow with a question mark and then meow with three exclamation marks. <laughs> oh my god! Suddenly the the cat felt like all hope was lost. Prince Jing's face was as icy as frost. With a flick of his fingers, the white cat was flung off, barreling into the legs of the servant who had brought it. The servant let out a scream of pain. The impact left the white cat dizzy, but it managed to stand back up, shaking its head fiercely. It's your fucking fault, stupid cat. It abandoned any thought of catching the cat, catching the fish, and rushed straight back into the noble consort's arms. Yeah, serves you right. S in fish stands for sex. Oh boy. Oh boy. I don't think so. I think you get time out. <laughs> I think. You have to be there. <laughs> it's going good. We're having so much fun. Oh, you can't even see. Hang on. There. You have to be pinned. <clears throat> oh, man. Catfish showdown. Not catfish. Cats and fish showdown. Yeah, you're in time out. Actually, I'll put you on a shelf. Hang on. Uh, You'll have to be, like, upside down on the shelf. Wait, no, maybe I can... Mm. What is this thing? This, this thing. I'll, I'll pin you to the shelf over here. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> right. Where were we? <clears throat> from his hiding place under Prince Jing's hand, Liu peeked out from the gaps between the prince's fingers. Prince Jing was rolling with laughter, <laughs> as expected of his tyrant master. <laughs> the white cat got what it had coming to coming again. God. Haha, <laughs> uh -huh, you can't jump. Noble Consort Chu was secretly delighted at seeing Prince Jing's Jing raise a hand right in front of the emperor. She bent down to pick up her white cat, which was still howling pitifully, and made a show of examining it. She pretended to be distressed as, he scol as she scolded. Piao Shu, you terrible thing! Haven't you learned from last time? Why did you have to provoke Prince Jing? Do you not take me seriously? All of Liu's happiness evaporated at her words. He was so furious that if he'd had a foot, he would have stamped it. 
While the noble consort seemed to be reprimanding her cat, in reality she was playing one of her little games. She was she was reminding the emperor that this wasn't the first time Prince Jing had taught her beloved pet a lesson, and that he didn't treat her with the respect she deserved as a, the noble consort and as his shoe's mother, and as his shoe mother, his shoe mother. Lol. <clears throat> After Lady Chu spoke, of course she, of course the second prince, Mu Tianzhao, piped Xiao Chao Chao Chao. I'm having trouble like distinguishing between the Z H and the X, um, when it comes to the middle of the word. Shut up, <laughs> Tianzhao, Chao Chao Chao. Ah, oh, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna have to um just go with it. <laughs> Shut up. God. Uh after Lady Chu spoke up, of course the second prince, Mu Tan Chao Tan Chao, uh piped up in support. My brother, the fifth prince, is just being a little mischievous. He didn't mean any harm. Royal father, mother, please don't blame him. <clears throat> Liu's eyes rolled back in his head. He blew out a huge bubble with a pop and turned his tail disdainfully towards the second prince. <laughs> the second prince's voice was mild, but underneath that gentle veneer was a ruthless countenance, even more so than the noble consort. While the noble consort played her little games, the second prince was practically accepting Prince Jing's guilt for him by saying he had no ill intentions, as though afraid the emperor couldn't reach that conclusion on his own. This evil cannon fodder. What the hell? There's just streaks now? That's so weird. Oi. <clears throat> what are you saying? Just what? You oh no. Okay. Okay, okay. Just give me a second to wrap my brain around things. Oh shit. And tea. My tea is cold now. This is a catastrophe. <laughs> Alright. Despite knowing Prince Jing, uh, despite knowing Prince Jing would eventually inherit the throne, and Mu Tian Chao Sha Cho Cho. Mu Tian Mu Tian Cho and the noble consort would both meet grisly ends. Liu couldn't help but feel a little, a little anxious. This mother-son duo was teaming up and taking advantage of the fact that Prince Jing couldn't speak, especially since Prince Jing didn't even have Wang Ji Gong Gong with him this time. <clears throat> Prince Jing had saved him so many times now, Liu couldn't sit idly by and watch them bully him. But what could he... A fish stuck in a bowl, due to the noble consort and her son, who were like the sun shining brightly in the middle of the sky. Liu was so indignant his cheeks puffed up. He started to swim in fury and frustrated circles in his bowl. The noble consort and her son's actions had the desired effect. The emperor's expression darkened as he remembered the noble consort's tearful complaint from earlier. Prince Jing. <clears throat> oh, wait, no. Prince Jing, I heard you threw her cat on her birthday. Is this true? On the day of her birthday, the noble consort had gone crying to the emperor that Prince Jing had hurled her precious cat, her precious pet, Piao Shu. <clears throat> now that he had witnessed Prince Jing's treatment of Piao Shu with his own two eyes, he was starting to believe noble consort Chu. Not that the emperor had any affection for the cat, it was merely a pet. Who cared if Prince Jing wanted to hit or kill it? Jesus. Previous, previ uh, privately, the emperor didn't think it was much of a concern, but this situation involved the noble consort, who was, after all, Prince Jing's shoe, Prince Jing's shoe mother. B 
Behind her was the second prince, who was also the emperor's choice for crown prince. The emperor didn't want there to be any bad blood between Prince Jing and the future crown prince, which is why he had summoned Prince Jing in the first place. He wanted to get to the bottom of the situation and give the noble consort an, explana an explanation appropriate enough to appease her. But Prince Jing gave the noble consort a fleeting, cold glance and made no move to explain. He continued to play with his little carp, eyes lowered. For some reason, though, this little fish's cheeks were puffed out. It was especially obvious when noble consort Chu spoke, almost as if it was angry. Prince Jing was rather amused. Could this fish see the noble consort and her son's trickery too? <laughs> it's so cute! That's the end of the chapter. <coughs> That's the end of the chapter. Yippee! <laughs> oh my god, I love it so much. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. I love it. It's so stupid. It's stupid. It's so stupid. By the way, you can change your little stream avatar by going to um. By going to like the, uh, what is it? It's not credits. Is it credit? I don't know. The other tab on my on your screen. I just look it off. There's a there's a thing. There's a thing where you can change it. Okay, just figure it out. <laughs> oh man, that was chapter eight. That was very fun. I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, chapter nine is titled. The fish is belly up. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Do you have eyebrows or something, Catlick? What is going on with your... What's going on? What is that? What is that? <laughs> Lol. The fuck? Ugh, okay. <clears throat> I think I could go for another two chapters, maybe three, but probably not. Probably just two. We'll see. Add in progress. That was- oh, okay, good. Well, it's good at- that was a fine place for that to be. Alright, chapter nine. In the face of Prince Jing's clear indifference, the emperor felt a little awkward. Who is speaking in this? Okay. Fifth brother, our royal father is asking you a question, Wu Tian Zhao reminded him, with what might have been a smile. The second prince had also the second prince had always been a little wary around Prince Jing, because the difference in their statuses. Now that he was about to become the crown prince, though, he was going to take that all back. Prince Jing looked up, but not to acknowledge the second prince. Instead, he looked at the head eunuch, Lao Risheng. Uh, not Lao. Luo Risheng. Luo Risheng had been prepared ever since the emperor had ordered Prince Jing to enter Changqing, pa Changqing Palace alone. At Prince's, at Prince Jing's glass, boy, boy, oh boy, oh boy, we are struggling. Brr. I love it. It's like the more I think about reading, the harder it gets. It's like when you think about, it's just like when you think about breathing or blinking, the harder it gets. Sorry, I made you think about that. <sighs> okay. Ugh. At Prince Jing's glance, Luo Gonggong order, ordered a few servants to bring the necessary ink and paper before him. It might be a bit inconvenient, but even if he couldn't speak, he could, he could still write. Exactly. Do, why? Why are they thinking that he can't ever express his thoughts? And like, yeah, you can write. Prince Jing accepted the brush with his right hand, his left still playing with the fish. <laughs> He didn't even look at what he was doing. He just wrote a couple of strokes and tossed the brush away. Not daring to look at what the prince had written, Luo Rusheng 
brought the prince's writing up to the emperor, his head lowered. When the emperor's gaze fell on the strong, powerful strokes that made up the vigorous characters, he couldn't help feeling a pang of sadness in his heart. But this was not the time to admire the prince's calligraphy. The only thing the prince had written was, It deserved it. Oh! <laughs> he Enough said. Mic drop. Like, he doesn't need to explain himself. It, it did deserve it. Also, it's a cat. Just chill. Because <laughs> gay people are dyslexic. So true. So true. <clears throat> I don't think I'm dyslexic. I think it's just like... A general disconnect. <laughs> Maybe that's what dyslexia is. But it's... You know... It's more like a translation error in my brain. It doesn't compute. <laughs> the only thing the prince... Yeah, yeah, yeah I, it deserved it. For as long as the emperor could remember, the prince had never once lied. This was the reason the emperor had decided to summon him, to question him directly. Back when Prince Jing had punched the other princes, he never tried to hide what he'd done, so the emperor didn't think he would deceive him in this instance. Since the prince had said that the cat deserved it, then sounding then something must have happened that he didn't know about. He couldn't be too hasty. The emperor's expression darkened as he and he looked toward head eunuch Luo. Luo Ruxing, go find out who else saw what happened that day. Well, if you brought, um, uh, I forgot what his name is. The other eunuch. Then maybe you could have an explanation, but you said not to bring him. <laughs> Bitch ass. Noble concerts Chu's face sw twisted, betraying her panic. She had spent so much time preparing for this moment, but now the emperor was doubting her just because of a couple of random words from Prince Jing. But as a noble consort dabbled at the corners of her mouth with a silk handkerchief embroidered with crabapple blossoms, her somewhat ferocious expression settled back into its beautiful facade. So what if the prince? So what if the emperor invest? So what if the emperor investigated? There wasn't a shadow of a doubt that Prince Jing abused the cat. Not to mention she had even she even had an eyewitness. It would be great if Prince Jing admitted it, but it would be even better if he made a fuss and refused to confess. No. <clears throat> She's so annoying. Zhao Linji was brought was quickly brought over from the imperial kitchen. The emperor decided to carry out the questioning himself since the matter involved his son, Prince Jing. Zhao Linji knelt there, his voice quavering, quivering. No, his voice quavered. I was right the first time. God damn. His voice quavering as he recounted everything he saw that day. This servant saw. As soon as Prince Jing saw the noble concert's cat, he, he grabbed it. He finished. Of course, noble concert Chu was at least two steps ahead, having ordered her trusted servants to bribe Zhao Linji before she even came to stand before the emperor. She knew the witness would be on her side. Fucking bitch ass. Your Imperial Majesty, it seems. Ah, uh, bruh. Your Imperial Majesty, it seems I didn't misunderstand the situation. Shouldn't Prince Jing give me an explanation? She smiled. Prince Jing, do you have anything to say? Was this what all his questioning had come to? The Emperor rubbed his brow. This is so stupid. He was getting a little tired. Me too. It's so stupid. A ruthless light flashed a ruthless light flashed in Prince Jing's eyes. Noble consort Chu must have gotten her claws into Zhao Linji, distorting the truth. He originally wanted to request that the Emperor should summon a guard who had been working at the time for questioning. He doubted Zhao Linji was the only one eyewitness in such a large palace. But after considering the matter further, he quickly lost all desire to do so. It didn't matter if there was an eye if there were eyewitnesses present that day or not. Each side would have their own version of what had happened. The situation wouldn't change. Why go through all that hassle? No, he'd be better off going straight for Zhao Linji's throat. 
It was unlikely that this person would stick to his story under threat of having his throat sliced open. It would be the quickest and most effective way to force him to tell the truth. Don't do it! Li Yu was extremely worried. He had a pretty good guess as to what Prince Jing's next move would be, having read the original book. Prince Jing would be walking straight into the noble consort's trap if he'd got violent in front of the emperor, further so souring his relation with his relationship with his father. With his royal father. Jeez. <laughs> Why? I think that's on you, kind of, for doing the league thing. No offense, but full offense. <laughs> gotta stop. It's unhealthy. You have an unhealthy relationship with League. Just admit it. <laughs> it's an addiction. All right. Uh, no more League talk. <laughs> but if he didn't resort to violence, what else could Prince Jing do? The noble consort had clearly come prepared. First, she had managed to convince the emperor to prevent Wang Ji from accompanying Prince Jing, obviously, effectively taking away the prince's voice. Now she'd provided an eyewitness who was extremely unfavorable towards Prince Jing. The prince was out of options. Aside from Zhao Linji, the only ones who were present at the time were the cat and Li Yu. With Zhao Linji deep in noble consort Chu's pocket, there was no way he'd speak the truth. Who was left to be Prince Jing's witness? The cat? Was there perhaps other evidence? Without realizing it, Liu had drifted to the bottom of the bowl. He had forgotten to even keep swimming, trying his hardest to rem remember how the white cat had run into Prince Jing. An image came to mind. When he'd peeked at Prince Jing changing, he'd, he had caught sight of what looked like a bruise on his leg. Huh? He had been so embarrassed at the time that he didn't take a good look. Yeah, you're a liar. And what he did see and what he did see had to be brief had been brief too. Besides, it wasn't out of the order for the man to have some bumps and bruises on his body. So Liu didn't think much of it, but he remembered the bruise had been right on his shin. Around the same height as the cat. Was that Piao Shu's doing? Bro kicked the cat so hard that he bruised his shin? Is that what happened? I really hope that's not what happened. I really hope. It was possible. If it were true, then it would prove the cat had attacked Prince Jing, and he had just caused and he had just cause for punishing it. Liu felt a rush of excitement at the thought of being able to clear Prince Jing's name, but now came the hard part. How could he let Prince Jing know about his epiphany? How can a cat bruise someone? I Like, cats aren't that heavy, unless you're gonna... Unless it's like, you know, when they put all their weight onto one paw when they're stepping on you. That could bruise, but not like a big part of your shin. What? <clears throat> he couldn't speak, so he had to get inventive. Desperately, he concentrated all of his energy on his tail and mustered up all the strength he had to swing it. His fish tail came smacking down, and with a splash, he almost as, with a splash, almost half the water in the bowl sloshed out. In the silent uh, Changqing Palace, so quiet you could hear a pin drop. The sound of the water splashing into the golden tiles was downright cacophonic. The emperor's eyes darted to the fish. Prince Jing, what is wrong with your fish? He asked, baffled. Prince Jing had been staring daggers at Xiao Lin Ji. His glower was enough to convey his thoughts. You're a dead man. But at the little carp's sudden movement, he turned to look at the fish, where it waited expectantly for him. Closer! Closer? Now! A quick and accurate swish of his tail, and Liu splashed all the remaining water in the bowl at Prince Jing. Prince Jing had rolled up his sleeve to let, keep himself dry while he played with the fish, 
but in just a split second, his face, chest, and robes were completely soaked. With his pants as the bigger casualty, Prince Jing said nothing. Uh, with his pants as the biggest casualty. Prince Jing said nothing, but his expression was like a dark storm cloud as he wiped at the water dripping down his face. <laughs> Stupid. Liu zipped to the bottom of the bowl to hide, too terrified to look at Prince Jing. <laughs> sob, sob, sob. The tyrant looked ready to explode, but he had no other choice. Plus, he didn't know it would get this wet. <laughs> he might say that again later. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> would the tyrant deal with him first, then Xiao Linji, before going to change his clothes? Ah, uh, Prince Jing was reaching toward him. Liu squeezed his eyes shut. With this tyrant, was this tyrant about to kill a fish? But after wa waiting with bated breath, all Liu felt was a little tap on his head, followed by a touch on his back. He was dumbfounded. Prince Jing glared at the troublemaking little cart before getting up and bowing to the emperor. The emperor understood and said, You may change quickly. We'll continue this once you return. Wang Ji had been standing just outside waiting anxiously. As soon as he saw the window of opportunity, he rushed in with a set of dry clothes for Prince Jing. He already had it prepared and slipped into a side hall to help him change. Liu let out a sigh of relief. Thank goodness Prince Jing didn't lose his temper. He had intentionally splashed water on Prince Jing's pants in the hopes that the prince would see the bruise on his leg when he changed and think to use it as proof. But it was fine even if the prince never saw it. Because Liu had still managed to buy the prince some time to cool down, in addition, now that Wang Chi was here, there was someone who could protect and speak for Prince Jing. Together, the prince and Wang Gonggong should be able to come up with a strategy to deal with a noble consort. <coughs> oh boy. My allergies are being very silly today. Mmm, cold tea. La 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 la. If worse came to worse, and they were forced to concede this particular conflict to the noble consort, the emperor would, at most, ask Prince Jing to apologize to her. He wouldn't actually punish the prince. It would leave the noble consort and her son feeling smug for a while. But Prince Jing could always get his revenge later. As he waited for Prince Jing to finish changing, Liu swished his tail happily at how well everything had played out. <laughs> Liu's eyes... Liu eyed... Wait, well, no, that's really wrong. <laughs> Lady Chu eyed the fish Prince Jing had brought. For years, she'd held a mix of hatred and envy for Prince Jing in her heart. Prince Jing might not be present in the room right now, but she wasn't going to get to let him go unscathed. Did he leave the fish in the room? Oh no. She stood up, sauntered over, and peered down with interest at the fish in the bowl. Something seemed to occur to her as she let out a light peal of laughter. Mu Tian Zhao had followed her had followed her over. He chuckled. Mother, what is this fish? I've never seen the likes of it before. He and his mother both had that kind of attitude to things they considered beneath them. Fucking ugh. So this really was the first time Mu uh, Tian Zhao had, never seen, had ever seen a live carp. Boy, you're sad. <laughs> the noble consort pursed her lips, then laughed daintily. My son is of royal blood. How could you be expected to recognize such a crude thing? It's nothing but the most ordinary fish used for cooking. His lips twitched up into a smile. My brother's taste is certainly quite unique. Perhaps I should ask our royal father to gift him some fish with a little more value. Fuck off. This fish is perfect. The words of admiration with thinly veiled barbs aimed right to Prince Jing. Liu halted directly underneath the two of them, not even bothered to, bothering to hide the fact that he was openly listening to them, utterly disgusted by their words. 
How dare they insult his owner and say he had no taste? He was the same as... That was the same as insulting him. They even had the audacity to say he was crude. Not even the emperor had gone that far. The you flicked the water angrily. He had to do something. All of, Lady Ch All of Lady Chu's attention was on the little carp as she came closer. She had never seen such a lively fish before. But, of course, she could never have guessed that, when it had splashed water all over Prince Jing just now, it had done it on purpose. After all, it was just an ordinary fish. Or was it? <laughs> but this fish had more guts than the noble consort could ever imagine. As she peered down at him, Liu was preparing himself to give her a face full of water. He had already drenched, prin drenched Prince Jing. There was no way he was going to show any mercy, mercy to cannon fodder. But as the noble consort approached, a flash of light caught Liu's eyes, and he noticed a golden phoenix hairpin by her forehead. He delicately, held delicately within the beak of the phoenix was a large sparkling pearl about the size of a person's thumbnail. That's a big pearl. Liu felt his stomach drop. He had a bad feeling about this. That couldn't be the ep eponymous? Ep eponymous? I have never heard that word before. The eponymous pearl from his side quest. Clear, bright pearl. Right? The system, which had been silent for a long time, replied lightly, User, you got it right. Liu was stunned. Stupid system! Can you get any more annoying? How was a fish supposed to retrieve a pearl from the forehead of the emperor's beloved concubine? Splashing her out, splashing her was out of the question for now. The noble consort was still a little too far away. He had to get her, he had to get her to come a little closer first. Liu readied his fishtail. He was going to strike back. For the pearl. For Prince Jing. As for how, the noble consort was very calculating in the book, which meant she was also very suspicious. An idea started to take form inside Liu's head. If you wanted to deal with these kinds of dirty tricks, you had to fight dirty too. How did a fish, how did a fish flip over again? Liu rolled over playfully, trying to rotate his belly up slowly. He floated in the water in that position without moving a muscle. He wasn't a comfortable it wasn't a comfortable position for a fish, but if he endured it for a little bit, he would definitely get results. The second prince was looking straight at the bowl while while, while he spoke to noble consort Chu. He saw it clearly when suddenly Prince Jing's fish twi what? Prince Jing's fish twitched strangely then flipped over. <coughs> oh, yeah. Mother, what's wrong with the fish? He blurted out. Noble Consort Chu, who was still basking in her, in her smugness, glanced over, and her heart nearly stopped. Didn't fish flip over when they died? But the fish had been so lively just a second ago. Lady Chu hardly cared whether a fish lived or died. Of course. Bruh. Lady Chu hardly cared whether a fish di lived or died, of course. But this was the fish Prince Jing had brought before the emperor. The emperor himself had been acquainted with it. But now the prince had left to change his clothes. And the two of them were the closest to the fish when it suddenly died. Who'd be able to explain that? Was this all part of Prince Jing's plan? She'd used Piao Zhi to cause problems for him, so he was using this fish to turn the tables on her. It was very possible. Otherwise, why would Prince Jing bring a fish to see the emperor? He had been waiting for this exact moment. This conspiracy theory was growing more and more likely to noble consort Chu, who was well-versed in back palace drama. As the fish floated belly up in front of her, she began to panic. Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see you. That's the end of chapter nine. <coughs> that is the end. And my throat is getting a little bit um itchy. 
is starting to get a bit itchy, so I'm gonna have to stop here. <clears throat> we were lucky last time for getting into like two, two and a half hours, but today it's just one and a half. That's fine. Oh boy. Oh boy, it's so silly. Uh, the next chapter is called <laughs> the next chapter is called fish style slap amazing i'm obsessed i love it so much well yeah that's all the reading for today it's not a lot i mean we got through what from chapter 7 to chapter 10 so I don't know, 67 to 96. Is that just like 20 pages? <laughs> 30 pages? That's kind of sad, but it's okay. It's okay. I've already been, like, I'm really tired today and things are happening, so. Yippee! 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 <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's, it's something that we actually got to stream today, so, yeah. I will head out and hopefully stream again on, I have, like, a tentative schedule that I may or may not be following, depending on how I feel. <laughs> um. Oof. My throat. It's not having a fun time. Um. Yeah, hopefully on Monday we can do another reading stream or maybe an art stream. I think I might just like alternate between reading and art streams. But um, yeah, that's all for today. I'll see you another time. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this stupid, stupid, beautiful book. It's so stupid and I love it. I love it so much. I'm obsessed with it. Ugh. But yeah, I hope you had a good time. I'll see you later.